everyone welcome back it's been a while i couldn't create any more videos because i was involved in the holidays and then uh different projects as you can understand so it's it's winters it's pretty cold where i am right now and i do not have a heating mechanism here in my room so funny anyways let's get back to the study and let's talk about what we're gonna do in this video all right so well we will try to demystify cloud adoption framework or CAF as the name suggests it's a framework to adopt the cloud wow <laughs> it's an intelligent way to decipher CAF I'm pretty sure a uh, lot saying other way around wouldn't make much sense anyways forget about this uh, pathetic joke anyways so we need to understand what is cloud adoption framework in this video we are going to demystify it and it is a huge documentation we cannot do it in a single video so i'll try to make a couple of videos to uh, grab the crux of this cap so that we can adopt cloud better as per the guidance so let's try to uh, understand the official definition first, rather than just saying it's a framework or this and that. Uh, so let me share my screen if this could help us to understand better. Okay. Let me close this one. Now it is better. All right, so cloud adoption framework, that's what we are trying to understand and the definition says it's a collection of if i put it here right here it's a collection of uh, best practices guidance tools and templates from microsoft microsoft partners and microsoft customers that's what that's what the official definition says now we need to go further and try to understand this official definition so what it says it says it has best practices for what well best practices for cloud deployment management and governance okay because you should not just go ahead and deploy anything on the cloud you should have governance in place because cloud means you can deploy anything but somebody has to pay right so you should have those kind of regulations like people should not create anything or everything wherever they want there should be a best practices for the deployment for your architecture there should be a way to manage your uh, resources in the azure so that's what it says best practices for cloud deployment management and governance then it says guidance well guidance for what guidance for strategy business strategy planning discovery and prioritization ultimately what we are doing with the help of uh, cloud adoption framework well we are moving to the cloud which involves stages, couple of stages that we will come to know once we, uh, what, when we talk about the different stages of CAF, but for now, for the context, because we have already covered migration in our playlist. So you know, when you migrate, we need to discover the resources that we need to migrate. We need to assess the resources, whether they are cloud ready and the right sizing of those resources. Then the migration itself happens. There are other activities involved in that migration phase. And where you're migrating, the destination, of course, you should have uh, something in place, plumbing in place, right? Landing zone, virtual network, those kind of things where you're migrating your stuff. So when we do the migration, there are strategies in place, like why we are doing it, why cloud, those kind of stuff. So we this provide, the CAF provide us the guidance for strategy planning, discovery, and prioritization. 
It also provides tools and templates. Tools and templates for what? Well, as I was talking about migrations, the tools for discovery, discovering what all workloads you have, how many workloads you have, or assessing, uh, planning, there, there, there are tools which will help you to plan, templates for deploying, there are uh, blueprints available on the Microsoft documentation that you could use to deploy and create your landing zones. So that's why tools and templates, let me put it down here. So we are just trying to demystify or decipher the CAF as per the official definition. All right, so this is what the official definition is. We're talking cloud adoption framework. And it is a collection of best practices, guidance, tools, and templates so that we could utilize someone experience of the people who have adopted the cloud with the help of CAF. I hope it is clear now, like what is CAF? So now if I would say it's a framework to adopt the cloud, you can get it. That framework includes what? All these three things, right? Best practices, guidance, tools, and templates. So now we know what is cloud adoption framework. So let's try to understand uh, who needs it, right? And before that, I must say, because if you go on cloud adoption framework MS documentation, you will find a huge document. But we are, we are not going to you know, go through the entire document. It's a, it will take ages. But we are going to break it down bit by bit and work through it, just like we did the, with the official definition. <clears throat> so why was the cloud adoption framework created? Well, I hope you already know now, the cloud adoption framework CAF was created to help guide decisions by providing a proven and consistent methodology for adopting cloud technologies. That's why. Hope we are clear with this, like what it is. It's a framework guidance and why we created. It is clear now. We could, we could say we know what it is. And now let's see who this framework uh, is for exactly, right? It's a framework. Somebody has to use this one. So who is going to use this framework? That's the question now. Well, it is an amazing documentation, no doubt about it, but it's, 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 it's super theoretical. But it uh, doesn't matter from where you belong. It will be helpful. What I mean by that, it means whether you're a business leader, you are a line of business leader, you are a decision maker, you are an IT guy, you are an operations team, you are security and compliance teams, anyone. Anyone can take the benefit of CAF, Cloud Adoption Framework. Basically, we can say anyone or everyone could take the benefit of this framework and it's made for the vast audience. However, most of the content in the CAF is targeted to the cloud architect as they are the facilitator and are responsible for bringing together business and technical leaders to drive decision-making around cloud adoption, right? So this, this entire thing was why, sorry, what, and now, we also talk about who. Now, <clears throat> let's see in a glance, why cloud adoption first, okay? So let's face it. In recent years, there's been a rapid acceleration in the cloud adoption of cloud or cloud adoption. Well, it all started with infrastructure as a service and now moving towards PaaS, serverless or cloud native to be precise to get the maximum benefit of the cloud, right? And if I share my experience as well, as you know, I'm solutions architect with Rexpace, by the way, one of the best company to work with. 
not promoting anything, but it's true. Anyways, back to my experience, within three years of Solutions Architect in rec space, I have seen people only moving to IS services like at the beginning. And then it started like the combination of IS and PaaS services. And now the deals, the projects, the proposals we are getting, it's all about as much as cloud native possible. So it is for real, people are moving to the cloud with the mindset of adopting in such a way that they can get all the benefits of the cloud, right? So <clears throat> many organizations now want to take advantage of uh, cloud, which are cost efficiency, we can say, if you uh, design in such a way that it could be cost efficient, scalability, we all know that, uh, security, uh, there are other benefits, flexibility, right? And on demand, so you need not to wait for six months for things to innovate, you can innovate then and there. And all the latest and greatest technologies are available there. And that's the reason because of the cloud, all this AI, ML and data is happening because it is available. Those resources are available on the cloud uh, and you can utilize those, right? So data centers are expensive with the cost of real estate, power, servers, storage, networks, plus of operations, staff tugging on a company's bottom line. It's no wonder that organizations see the cloud as a way to reduce or even eliminate some or all these expenses and move towards innovation, move towards uh, optimization and bring as much as profit possible. Apply the, the, the savings in the business rather than hardware operations that's why, right? So while the benefits are worthy, the migration journey can be complex. And, we, and when you are in a position to move to the cloud, it is essential uh, to have guidance from strategy definition and planning to governance and management and every step in between. Because cloud architecture is totally different how it used to be in legacy or traditional days, hence CAF, which include all the aspects that you need to think about, care about, and keep in mind while adopting cloud. Now, hope things would be clear now, and let's have a look on uh, different phases which are involved in the CAF, and then we'll talk about each phases, all right? So till now, we, we know what CAF is, why CAF needed, who can get the benefit of this CAF, right? We are good with these three questions. Now, if anybody would say, you can easily explain, and it's not about explaining CAF to someone because it comes during the conversation for sure, but this is more of a framework we use while dealing with these situations. So now let's go ahead and uh, talk about different uh, phases, as we said. So in CAF, there are uh, phases. The very first is strategy. Strategy, where we talk about uh, why cloud, why now? Uh, is there any challenges that you are trying to fix by moving to the cloud, like why you want to move to the cloud? What are the business drivers, technical drivers, challenges, uh, business outcomes, those kind of things, timeline, those kind of things, right? So the very first is strategy. And you have the templates, the tools and templates. You have the templates so that you can define your strategy on the paper, on the, you can document it and follow it. It's just not like for the conversation, you can, actually go ahead and document it. There are templates available. Now, once you know why you are doing this, why you're adopting cloud, then comes to the picture, how you're gonna, like what all workloads that you have in your data center that you want to move. So the phase come 
is uh, discover, then you do the assessment, and then you do the planning, and then will migrate in a, in a high level. But if I open, let me open the cloud adoption framework, Azure. You see, there is a strategy phase, there is a planning phase, there is a ready phase, and there is a migrate phase. Okay, there is an innovate phase. It wasn't there, but they have included this recently because this document is not done. This is a continuous improvement. As soon as you find new things, they keep on adding the new things. Then we have governance and management. If I show you overview, there is a beautiful diagram or the picture uh, which gives a lot more information and we can relate that. Anyways, the point is we have these phases, strategy, plan, ready, adopt, cover, and manage. The point is we have strategy, then we have planning phase. Instead of writing, I think if I just talk about those phases, give you a little idea that would be better. So let's go back to the documentation. All right, let's not do this. All right, so <clears throat> the phases we have, strategy we already talked about, and then we have plan, plan phase. In the, in the planning phase, we are planning to adapt to the cloud, which include the discovery, what all workloads we have, what are the dependencies, what are the performance, what is the application value, whether, whether those applications are gonna remain for like five, month, five years or gonna die in five months. Then the assessment, whether they are cloud ready, and then the grouping of the uh, workloads as per the dependencies, right sizing, those things happen in the assess phase. And these two, these two phases, discovery and assessment comes under the plan phase. Now, ready is all about preparing the destination. Here comes the landing zones that we talk about. Landing zones you see here under ready. And then comes the actual migration because you know what to migrate now. You have all those workloads in place as per assessment, but you also have the destination where you want to migrate. That is the ready phase. Now the actual migration. Once the migration happens, then there is a governance, governance phase and the manage phase, which is not like, and let me tell you this, this is not like these phases are happening once, it's not like a waterfall, to be honest. Uh, you can apply governance, you can keep this mind, keep governance in mind when you're preparing your environment in the ready phase. It's not like it will come at the end. It will be there, it will start from the ready phase or it will start actually on paper from the strategy and planning phase. And the governance will be applied with the help of policies, RBAC, tagging, locking, center, security center, uh, from the ready phase as well. It's, it's a continuous process. Same goes with the management. It's not like once everything is done, then I'm gonna manage it. We need to think about it from the beginning, right? And then uh, <clears throat> innovate, we can, we can also, innovate while migrating. For example, you're not doing lift and shift. You, you want to refactor it, you want to re-architect it, right? Or maybe you just want to move to the cloud and then innovate it because you need not to wait for six months for some hardware, for some uh, machine or server to innovate. You have there on demand. You, you work on it, you destroy it. You need to pay for an hour or two. Anyways, so that's the cafes cloud adoption framework is. I hope I would be able to give you uh, a good picture of cloud adoption framework. If you have questions, please uh, comment. And we are not done yet. We're gonna explore all these, uh, all these phases or steps involved in the cloud adoption framework. So let's meet in another video. Till then, take care, goodbye.